Why are there so many different ways to write the same code in C Sharp? Have you ever found yourself looking at some code online and they declare read-only properties like this? And then you look at some code in some other examples and they have properties written like this. You might be thinking, why? Why do this? Why does C Sharp have so many different ways to do the same thing? Well, you're not alone, and I'm here to give you the lowdown on some of the language's most curious syntax choices and the historical reasons behind these duplications. In today's video, I'm going to cover a few more examples of duplicate syntax in C Sharp, such as the two ways to write a switch statement, uh, the two ways to approach link queries, and then the several different methods you've got for looping, and two techniques for asynchronous code execution. Along the way, we're going to discuss the reasons why these duplicate syntax options exist and how they can help you write cleaner and more expressive code. Before we dive into the specific examples, let's take a moment to explore the evolution of C Sharp. You see, the language has undergone numerous updates since its inception in 2002, with each version of C Sharp introducing features and enhancements. Sometimes these updates have added new syntax options without necessarily replacing the old ones. So this results in multiple ways to accomplish the same tasks. The driving force behind these changes has often been the desire to make the language more modern and more expressive and more versatile, whilst also maintaining backwards compatibility. So if we go back to those read-only properties, this second version here is newer, and they introduced this to save you some time, basically. This is a lot quicker to write. But even though this second way of writing a property was added to the language, they didn't go back and remove the ability to write out a getter function manually, like at the top here. There are millions of lines of c -sharp code deployed around the world that use properties written with the get keyword like this. So if the developers of the language simply remove that as an option, then they will break backwards compatibility. So the only choice is either never introduce new time-saving features or live with this kind of duplication in the language. So first up, let's have a look at switch statements. In c -sharp, you've got two options for writing a switch statement. You can use the classic statement, which looks a little bit something like this. So that's switch and then the argument in brackets and then the cases written underneath like this. This is called a switch statement and c -sharp also has a more modern switch expression. That's written like this. So in a switch expression, you have the variable name and then the word switch and then the cases inside an object like this expression here. Both approaches get the job done, but the switch expression has a more compact and functional feel to it. And that encourages you to think less about the control flow of your program and think of a switch more as a pattern matching expression that you apply to some data. And this is an example actually of how C Sharp has evolved from being a predominantly uh, used to write procedural logic to being used to write more functional code like in the second example here. Next, uh, let's talk about link queries. Link is a powerful feature that allows you to write complex data manipulations with an SQL-like syntax. In C Sharp, you can use either the query syntax or the method syntax. So here's an example of each. The query syntax, you can see we've got from and then n in numbers, whereas the method syntax underneath, we've done numbers.where and then n. So these two are achieving the same thing. These are essentially mapping the numbers into items called n, but they've got very different ways of writing them. Um, the where clause also in the top one has got where, the actual word where, and then the expression, whereas the bottom one has just written it as one of these inline lambda functions as well. So these two do exactly the same thing, and it's really, you can choose whichever of these two syntaxes feels more natural to you. They both have their merits, and it really is a matter of personal preference. I would say the method syntax is probably more common in the C-sharp developer community, but there are certainly people out there who love the query syntax on top here as well. So it really is entirely up to you and your team. Loops are next on our list. In C-sharp, you've got an entire smorgasbord of loop options, including the classic for loop and the more concise for each loop, and then the often forgotten while loop as well. So there's a traditional for loop, and this was the first type of loop to be introduced into the language, and this is where you specify what your um, counter variable, in our case i, is, and how it acts and how it increments. 
Then you've got the for each loop, which has to be used on something that implements i enumerable. So in our case, this collection variable, which is a collect, which is a enumerable collection. Next up, you've got the while loop. The while loop puts a condition at the start, then it runs some code, and then it asks you to increment some kind of condition that it can evaluate at the start. And then there's the often forgotten do while loop, which is very similar to the while loop, except it puts the condition at the end. So in a do while loop, you always do the first iteration of the loop, and then you evaluate at the end whether to do the second iteration. Whereas with the while loop, you always do the evaluation of the condition first. Now let's look at asynchronous code execution. Asynchronous code execution is a programming technique that allows certain tasks to run concurrently without waiting for the completion of other tasks or operations. This approach is particularly useful when dealing with time-consuming operations such as network requests or file IO or database queries or anything else like that that could block the main execution thread and it could make the application unresponsive. In a synchronous programming model, the code executes sequentially, meaning that each task must complete before the next one can begin. In contrast, asynchronous code execution enables tasks to start and run in the background. So that allows the main thread to continue processing other tasks and user interactions and things like that. So as a result, the application can remain more responsive and efficient even when dealing with the lengthy operations because we put them in a background task. C Sharp offers two main approaches to asynchronous code execution. You've got thread.run and then you've got async and await. Here are some examples of both. Thread.run is uh, called using this thread static class and then we call the dot run method like this. And then whatever we want to run on another thread is held in this Lambda expression inside the run method. Async is done entirely differently. We don't do thread.run, we don't call the thread class at all. We simply put the async keyword in front of our function name, and then we use await inside the function where we want to await some code. So these are two execution models, or it's two ways of writing what is essentially a very similar thing. The main difference here is that the async await syntax is just more modern. So Microsoft obviously will lean towards using async and await and it will recommend you do that for more modern code, but there is still a place for thread.run in the modern world. Both of these options are still valid and they're both useful. Both of these options are still valid and they're both useful in different scenarios. So it's good to have them both in your toolkit. The async await syntax is actually newer and it's more versatile. So if you're starting a new project in C Sharp, then you should probably tend towards async and await. But just like with read-only properties that we looked at earlier, the task.run method is still in there and you can still use it. There are still plenty of perfectly valid use cases for writing task.run or some of the other task methods on your c -sharp code. Lastly, we have if-else statements. Now, if you're using an if-else statement in c -sharp to set the value of a variable, then you actually have two options. So here we've got this result variable, which is a Boolean. And we can either set this by doing if and then a condition and then set it to true, otherwise set it to false. Or we can use this ternary syntax of the question mark. So here we're setting the result to the condition. If that's true, then set it to true. If it's false, then set it to false. So this is actually doing exactly the same as the if else statements above. It's just doing it in a much more declarative way. And that brings us to the end of our C-sharp's duplicate syntax exploration. As you can see, C-sharp offers a variety of ways to tackle similar problems. That gives you the flexibility to choose the syntax that feels most natural and readable to you and your team. Remember, there's no one size fits all solution. So don't be afraid to experiment and to find what works best for you. By understanding the historical context and the reasons behind this duplicate syntax, um, you gain a deeper appreciation for C-sharp as a language, um, and you get a deeper appreciation of the flexibility that this can really give you. So keep learning, and you'll continue to unlock new ways of solving problems and expressing your ideas in code. For more C-sharp tips and tutorials and things, don't forget to subscribe to the Train to Code channel here on YouTube. If you've got any questions or comments or suggestions, then feel free to pop them in the comment section below. That's all for this video. So until next time, my name is James Charlesworth and this is the Train to Code YouTube channel.